On the weekend, I tweeted about using NATS as a backend for HTTP marker services. And what I did was create the transport for the standard HTTP um, client and server and Go um, so that it just transparently turns everything into NATS awareness. You don't have to change your handlers, you don't have to change your code. All you have to do is inject a new transport, which most of the Go middleware supports pretty much out of the box. It's a standard extension point. Um, so here I have nine NATS servers that are hosted in San Francisco, New York, and London. It's a large cluster of NATS servers that are really easy to run, um, very lightweight. Uh, these ones are doing persistent storage as well, so they're a little bit more memory than typical, but it's just it's, it's a large NATS network. On each of these machines, I run one instance of the uh, microservice, and so if I were to hit that microservice from within my shell, which is in London, I'm getting it served up by London. You can see the cluster here is always London. Um, that is because NAT's aware that I'm in London and it will try to serve the traffic for me from where nearest I am. However, it's using a server in free London, in two London. Let's see, maybe we'll get in one London to show up. There it is, in one London. And so it's doing a, a load share across these backends. This morning I took a uh, time to write a caddy plugin. Caddy is a HTTP um, server, it's really great. Um, automatically out of the box supports a bunch of things, including um, let's encrypt and so forth. So I wrote a quick plugin for that, which allows me to route normal HTTP traffic onto the NATS backend. So here we can see, again, London is serving it and free London serves it. The connection from Caddy to NATS is persistent. It's long running, no new connections have to be made. Um, it's multiplex, it's really, really fast. Um, vast amounts of requests can go over there. And it's really nice that we don't have to create any new connections to to serve up these these um, you know these requests. This is running in my house in Malta, while the servers are running in London. If I were to make you know new TLS connections for every request here, it would be extremely slow. But it just shows that a long persistent connection, very much like the benefits you get from gRPC and so forth. However, much easier to to um, load balance. So I mentioned that we have. Um, G, you know, global geo failover here. So if I go, for instance, here where my microservices is run, this is the backends for um, for London, and I shut them all down. Um, so now London's completely dead. However, um, our server continues to work because NATS automatically recognizes that. Someone in London is trying to connect to a service that's not there. However, uh, network-wise, the nearest next available cluster with the service is in New York. And so New York is serving the traffic for me and load balancing, everything is normal. From the perspective of a user, all I saw is slight increase in latency. If I start my weather server back up in, in London, I don't know how to start them all, but you know, just um, to demonstrate, now we're back in London. Um, geo failover, failback has happened from New York to London. It's instantaneous. I mentioned there that we have things like, um, you know, traffic routing and so. This is the subject within that's so where, where the market services live. I'm mapping it onto a specific version, yeah, version two. And so, and it's getting 100% of traffic. If I wanted to do a rail out of version three, um, or a rollback or whatever, I would adjust these mappings and I would say that version 3 is start getting 1% of the traffic versus, you know, 99 for V2. You can also see it's running here on a particular account called Weather and so internally in NATS it's multi-tenanted so there's a private space for, um, you know, for, for, for the weather service. I can have multiple different accounts, so different clients or different, um, you know, other internal services who wish to use this API, and I can even map those to different versions so that if one particular aspect of my service still requires version one, we can map them onto a version one instance of the market services. Everyone else gets version two. We can do fault injection, all this kind of stuff. This is really great. Um, you know, I'm, I have to make almost no changes to my code. It's like two line change, and any existing market service supports it. Adding Caddy really opens up to the world and allows us to do, um, 
you know, really gradual migrations of our services from HTTP onto NAT based. You get a lot of the benefits that you would get from a standard service mesh, um, except this is not Kubernetes specific, this works anywhere. Um, here I just have, you know, standard VMs. It could be Kubernetes, it could be standard VMs, it could be anything you want. Um, and in fact, you could even use a um, software as a service middleware instead of having to host it yourself. Um, anyway, really great, thank you very much.